next recipe, which is basically fried and grilled fish. Um, usually I would just grill the fish, but this is a cassava fish. Uh, cassava fish, when grilled, is not very great with flavors. So once you lightly fry it, it gets a bit brown, then you put you know, whatever you're gonna put on it, and then it marinates for a little while, and then you bake it. That's when all the flavors kind of go inside. Cassava fish is bland. You need for the flavors to penetrate and just, you know, hit the inside of that fish. So I'm just going to create a piece. Just always make sure your work top is clean. One of the first things my father ever taught me was to make sure my kitchen is always clean. First time he saw me cooking in the kitchen. Why is the kitchen so dirty? I said, well, I can cook. That's all that matters. He says, no. It also matters if your kitchen is clean while you cook. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to open it up like a book because I want it to fry through. And also because I'm going to be lightly frying it, I want it to be very open so that once I put it in the oil, a few minutes and I can just check it out. Okay. Just going to, you want to open it up. It just is washed and clean, but there's still some, a little bit of stuff you need to get out. Just going to lightly cut through. So, like so, along the bone, it's just going to open up as you slice. Very sharp knife, I always advise, but do not let it anywhere near your hand either. Okay, the head needs to come down as well. Going to take this, just beat down the head. See, nice and flat. That way. See, this is nice and open. Great. This now looks like a book or a bowl or whatever it looks like. Um, I would usually take out the stem. It's too much trouble. You don't have to go through it. But if you can, you should. When you take out the stem, then all you get is this nice meaty fish. See? Have this nice flat surface. Let's check our fish sauce. It's going nicely. Our fish stock is also going quite nicely. I think our fish stock is ready, so I'm just going to. You can just keep this fish stock, you, you can drain it and then just keep it liquid. Every time you're making any food that you want to have a bit of fish flavor, instead of going to the supermarket, buying some fish sauce, I think you can just make fish sauce of your own. So I'm just going to take a bit of these. Again, ginger, garlic, onion mixture as much as possible. A bit of salt. You need to put enough to evenly coat it. Okay. You can add a little bit of pepper just to give it a bit of a zinc. I do that a lot. I like pepper with everything. Good. So the reason why I'm not over seasoning this right now is because I'm going to fry it 
and then I am also going to you know just add a little bit of sauce on the body of the fish and then bake it a little while so you don't need to add all of the goodies now you do that when you're about to bake it so a little bit of fish powder a little bit of salt You can also just bake it. Sometimes, you know, the frying process is very, you know, frying and then baking it if it's too hectic for you. The way it is, if you bake it, you still get best result. Okay. That is ready. Just going to clear this up. Okay, now I am going to fry this fish before I make a small gravy, put it all over it and bake it. Okay, so our fanti fanti is about ready. I'm just going to do not break up the fish. The beauty of the dish is the fish being intact. Also, do not overcook it. Just light, nice. Doesn't have to be too thick a gravy. If you like it thicker, just leave it to just reduce a little bit more. Mm. That's very good. It needs a bit of salt though, so I'm just going to add a little. About a half a teaspoon should be fine. I don't know anybody who likes too much salt in their food. Look how beautiful that is. Fish is still intact. At this point, you can actually just let it go of the fire because after you take food of the fire, it still cooks for about five minutes because the pan is still hot. So at this point, you can just you know, put it aside, cover it, it will cook by itself for about another five minutes and then by the time you're ready to eat it, it would have simmered down a bit more and become a bit thicker. This is a proper fisherman's stew. Okay, I'm just going to transfer that here. And I have my oil for frying the fish. I'm just going to... My pan is a little bit small. I wish I could um, fry all of it in the oil, but I can't. So I'm just going to slice that down in half. Don't worry, when we are plating, the two parts can still come together. Just going to make it very hot. And let's just try. I'm just going to let that go in. See? That nice, nice char. I'm not going to put both of them into the pot because what's going to happen is they're going to be on top of each other. Just going to get my strainer here. Not too long in the fire. Make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. The aim is to lightly fry it, not, you know, fry it till it's dry. So you need to keep an eye out for it to make sure that it's browning, but it's not drying up. Because once you put it in the oven, it's going to cook for a few more minutes. So you don't want to cook all of it now. going to get my pan for the grilling or the baking. Baking grilling doesn't really make much of a difference. I'm going to check on my fish. Check to see when the sides, the sides begin to brown. 
I've put it, you know, ups, you know, upside down. No, it's not upside down. It's actually top face up. So I can't see what the skin looks like underneath it. So you just, you can tell by looking at the sides. If the sides are cooking, the back is cooking at the same, you know, um, temperature. Can you see that? Just a little bit more, about a minute more. Because I've flattened it, it's cooking much faster than a normal fish would. So this is actually a good way to cook fish if you don't want to overcook it. You know, or you're cooking it for children, you can just you know, cut it up, take out all of the bones, take out all of the diff difficult parts to eat, and just give your children this nice you know, fleshy fish that they can just enjoy. I'm going to take this out and put this in a strainer. Let me see the back. The back, see? We don't want it to be too fried. We don't want it to be too little fried either. Just going to put this here. Just great. Now, second part of our fish. Like so. A boat. The head is a little bit harder to cook so make sure the fish is literally swimming in the oil so that you don't have anything sticking to the bottom of the pan. The, the sides are browning nicely, not quite done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little gravy, you know, just yeah, cut, in, cut a few vegetables, you know, make a little gravy and then just kind of sort of just slather it on top of the fish and I'm going to bake it for about 10 minutes so that all of it would just absorb into the fish and then I am going to serve with the banku that I'm going to make in a few minutes and then we are going to tie all of it together and we are going to welcome Kathy for dinner. I've made this little mixture of the two red and green peppers and then a little bit of spice and some fish so I'm going to add a bit of oil to it and I'm just going to this is what I'm going to use to coat the fried the lightly fried fish okay, so I'm just going to put that here see how nice it is just put this over it you don't want too much because the mixture is a bit salty and the fish has already been salted and spiced. So just a little bit. You can use any sort of sauce actually. You can even use barbecue sauce if you want. Just something to give it that extra. You don't want it to be too fried. You just want it to be like a mixture of fried and baked. Or a cross between fried and baked fish. So just all over it. This, this mixture is also very spicy, so it sort of takes away the need for, you know, dipping your uh, fish into pepper. That's what I do when I'm eating fish and pepper. I like to take a bit of the fish and dip it into the pepper, but this eliminates the need to do that because you have all your pepper already on your fish. So like that. And turn it. All of that. Let's do it. We are going to lightly oil our pan. Just a little bit of oil. And just sort of spread it around where you're going to put in that. And just, you have to be careful your fish doesn't break up. Remember, we need the plate. So I'm just going to do that and do that. Great. Looking very nice. Okay, it's not coming together <laughs> the way we had hoped, but still good enough. We're just going to pop it into the oven a few minutes, about five minutes, just so the juices will just soak into the fish. And then we're just going to bring it out and it's ready to eat with our banku and our pepper. A few minutes in the oven is going to come out looking very nice and 
you know, even browner than it was before. We're just going to wait for a little while and that's going to be done soon. While we wait for that, so I'm going to quickly make my banku mixture using maize dough and cassava dough. So I have this nice maize dough here. If you're making it, you know, for just one person or you don't um, have the sort of fire that you can just, you know, quick them, um, really do it properly like we do it here, you can just use a little bit and then use your one hand, a little spatula, oh sorry, and you should be good to go, just a little bit more. Sure. Um, one of the dishes that we made, the fancy fancy, is usually eaten with um, uh, so something that is made with uh, maize dough uh, that you don't add cassava dough to but we are going to make normal usual banku because that's what most people are very um, are more conversant with so I'm just going to add a pinch of salt to that if there's no salt in your banku it's not going to taste good it's going to just taste flat and bland like that so just mix it together very well. Just take out any stuff. Just, I have some water here. In the meantime, I am going to put on my cooker. I'm just going to add, just, I think you just, you kind of, there is no measuring. Just keep you know, adding it to it, depending on the consistency that you want it. If you want it a bit harder, you know, a little bit less water. What I do is, you know, halfway through, I just kind of add a little bit of water and just kind of let it boil so that it cooks through so that the next time I just put the spatula in it, it's ready. So I'm just, I'm not gonna make it too light because of, you know, the water that I am going to put somewhere, you know, along the line. So just a little bit of water, just sort of, mix it together you don't want it to be lumpy there are lumps so while you just sort of you have to mash that's what you need to do as if you were mashing kinky we've all had mashed kinky before so just mash 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 and so what you get is it becomes smooth you see you want it to become smooth you don't want some of those lumps all over the place because what happens is once the banku is ready you have these huge lumps in them nobody wants to eat that so you just need to, you don't need a lot of water if you add a lot of water at once you are not able to bring out all the lumps but when you make it thick in consistency then once it's smooth and nice you just add the water little by little so more going to put this here just clean this up a bit and then just go for a spatula I use something very small because I want to have a little bit of control if you use um, uh, um, what's it called the big type that we use locally it's going to be very long once it's very long you cannot hold it this way which means the banku becomes more difficult to manipulate so you just want to use a very small wooden spoon these are everywhere in the market use a small wooden spoon and just stir repeatedly till it is very thick in consistency do not forget to stir do not make your fire very high the banku will start burning before you can say jack that is the specialty of banku burning so we're just going to do this very nicely and very fast so that it comes together faster. The way that I try, you know, to eat local food in a healthy way is I try to limit the amount of carbohydrate I add to the overall dish. So I have all these beautiful proteins and you know soups and sauces that are very healthy so when i'm serving i use very small serving sizes for the banku so you know why you know, eat all of this carbohydrates which is you know not really the best thing for your body 
when you can just have a little bit of everything a little bit of grilled fish a little bit of you know soup a little bit of tomato stew so that the banku just becomes a very you know not a very central part of the dish i think around here our carbohydrates are very central our banku is almost done see what it looks like when the when it's done it changes color becomes creamer see how smooth the consistency is no lumps great nice consistency it's very not too hard not too soft This way you can eat it with soup or pepper to taste just as good. Good. Now we're just going to, we have this cling film. I usually prefer using cling film instead of the plastic that we, use, we normally use. Cling film just makes it look prettier. We are just going to double it up this way. bit of water here which we're going to be dipping our ladle into Great. about cooking is that if you don't have the right accoutrements you don't have to worry anything can stand in for something you don't have a spatula use a wooden spoon you don't have the thing that we use to scoop it up use a wooden spoon so we're just going to sort of wrap this up wrap this up Done with the banku. I'm just going to bring it up here. Our fancy fancy is ready. Looks good. Looks colorful. Uh, as well as our okra. Our okra looks good as well. It's also ready. Um, we have our fish grilling in the um, in the um, oven. I'm just going to check now to see if it's ready. If it's all nice and well done. I'm just going to take this out. Oh, look at that. That, that. So beautiful. It still has all those pepper flakes on it from the pepper mixture that we added to it. I'm just going to take a bit of these green onions, these spring onions. I'm just going to very small portions. You're trying to garnish this, the fish with this. You don't want to overdo it. I like the green portions more than the white portions, so I'm just going to cut out a little bit of a white portion so that I can get more of the green. Great. In as small pieces as you can. This is for garnishing. You're supposed to. Or you can just do big pieces like this, put it around. 
anyhow you decide to go by it garnishing is just to make the food pretty it's not exactly for practicality so you can make some like so make others like so and then just add this and then we'll make more of the cubed ones we can garnish now so all of this is ready our okra stew our grilled fish we have our garnishing here um, I'm going to add a bit more herbs to our garnishing and we have our fancy fancy on the stove our banku is also nicely done and nicely um, put down we are just going to put everything together and just sort of serve it and then my friend Kathy will come over and then we are going to eat all our dishes are ready uh, Kathy is here Kathy say hi Hi to everyone, Kathy is my very dear friend and I wanted to make her something really special. She's been very busy the last couple of days putting together her kiddie mile race. So Kathy has some time now so she decided to just, you know, pass by and let's eat some food. I made this very nice uh, mango uh, juice with some mint for Kathy. she likes mango. So I'm just going to, we are not going to serve, we are going to eat together on this platter. We're just going to take one of these banku and just unroll it like so. Kathy, I made all of these variety just so you could choose which one you liked. I wasn't sure whether you'd like some soup or some something grilled or something in a stew. So I'm just going to. Which one do would you like to try? Um, I'd like to try all of them. Oh, <laughs> that's greedy. <laughs> So I'm just going to dish a bit of everything on this plate. Our nice okra made with a special technique. A little bit of that. Just going to pick this up. Do you like fish head? I don't. No, me neither. <laughs> I don't know anybody. I usually just leave it for the presentation, but I hardly ever eat it. So we have that. A little bit of a fante fante. And then I'm just going to give you a little bit of every color of the pepper. You have black. You can try it. The pepper is very hot. So cut the heads up. Okay. This fish and then place it right here. Now we are ready to eat. You first. <laughs> Let's try it and tell me what you think. Verdict. <laughs> I love it. Great. This okrum, you know who taught me how to make this okrum? I had this very special friend, her name is Glory, she's Nigerian. She just made it once and I loved how easy it was. I love it. This fancy fancy is not something that I've made, you know, I've made before. I just seen someone made it once. But it's really good with cake. I love how It's kind of like soaked all of this tomato juice. So which do you prefer? Mm. 